Hey everybody, good to see you back once again. The day's finally arrived. We are going to determine what the overall build cost tally is to date on the Caterpillar D2 number 5J1113 tractor project. And this can sometimes be a bit of a difficult subject to discuss. Uh, finances can sometimes be a slippery slope. And I first did a overall cost cap analysis of the Farmall Super M project uh, right after we uh, completed that. That was the first episode like that I had ever made. And I wasn't sure how well received it was going to be, but in hindsight, the reception has been overwhelmingly positive from it. And a lot of people were appreciative that I broke down like a comprehensive cost analysis of rebuilding every different area of an old tractor. And they said they had appreciated that because they were thinking about uh, undertaking a project like that themselves. And they were happy that they now had a little bit of an idea what they might be getting into. So for the Caterpillar world, a D2 in particular, this tractor was the perfect project to do the same thing. And of course, 1113 is the tractor that was never supposed to be. When Senior and I found this, it was in such poor condition, we were buying a parts unit. And that was October 18th, 2019. We first started prepping it for loadout and hauling home and YouTube stepped in and said, no, I think we can save this. This is better than just a parts uh, tractor. So by very early 2019, well, yeah, I was in full swing on the rebuild, starting to tear everything down. And the overall extremely poor condition of this tractor to begin with made it the perfect candidate to do a comprehensive front to back from bare castings, build back up to the last nut and bolt rebuild of a Caterpillar D2. And we did a lot of extra things along the way. So. We've got the red folder here. That's right. It is red for a reason. <laughs> That's where all the receipts and everything that I've been able to document on this project have went. And I put together the tally of everything involved in the project. It's all right there. So let's get into it. All right page one of the breakdown on the bench and I categorize this according to like build stage increments same as I did with the Farmall Super M. So we're starting with a diesel engine short block or rotating assembly as they call it. So we're talking about an engine block that does not have a cylinder head, no front cover, no flywheel, no bell housing, no oil pan, oil pump. We just have an engine block with a crankshaft, liners, we have pistons, rings, and rods pretty much all we're dealing with. And we spend a lot of money in a hurry right here. So to begin our rotating assembly short block breakdown, our NOS main bearing set is up first. Now this was the go, no go gauge for the whole project because if I could not find good mains for it, the whole thing was off. Once again, big shout out to Florin Tractor. They came through for me in a big way right there. 493.65 for the complete set of new old stock main bearings. I did it with a smile on my face. Um, that means we can proceed ahead. So cylinder liners, new cat, all four of them, $370.04. The liner upper seals were crazy. New from cat, it's a copper ring. They cost $76.92 each for a total of $291.68. The liner lower seals, quite affordable. They're just O-rings, $38.40. We have pistons. now. I got replacement pistons for this from that 5J9323 D3400 parts engine. And I had paid $100 for that engine. I just figured $100 for those pistons. That's the easiest way to do it. We got four new old stock piston pins, totaled $64. And we had to split um, some of the piston rings. I was able to find new old stock, $111.90. The remainders I had to get new from CAT. Those totaled $144.67. So our overall tally for the rotating assembly short block is $1,614.34. Now we take it out to a long block. That means we fit the cylinder head, we get the front assembled, we get the rear assembled, we get the bottom assembled. We're still not ready to run, but we're a closed up engine. So we'll just leave our short block tally up above. So to begin the long block, you can see we have a lot of miscellaneous things on here and y'all can pause this at any time and look at some of these tallies if you want. I'm gonna go through it pretty quick from this point on. So we're putting the oil pan on, we got the gasket. 
bell housings going on, water seal fold over locks. We um, did that first gen ring gear swap. You know, we got some NOS uh, locks and screws for that, 3420, and then fold over locks for the flywheel, pilot bearing seal, front crank seal. This is all pretty low buck stuff. Um, new water drain petcock, the four decompressor shaft seals that run along that right side of the engine on the, uh, the tappet boxes. New head gasket from CAT 8244. Uh, I did have a machine shop do a lot of cylinder head reconditioning. Um, they checked it for cracks. They planed the, um, the gasket surface. I also had them, I think they uh, put a couple valve seats in, and I also had them fit all the uh, new guides and valves and springs. That was $391. And we resealed the pre-combustion chambers. The uh, eight new from Caterpillar valve guides were $237.60. I had NOS valves intake and exhaust complete set. That was only $200. We've got the valve cover gasket and we are rebearing the water pump, new seals in the water pump, new thermostat, fitted the oil filter. And yeah, there's the filter element there, new from CAT 2050. And then all those L364 fold over locks, 42 of them all told that engine seals or uh, keeps everything tight. That was only $12.23. So that means our long block assembly total was another $1,230.91. Add the 161434 from the existing short block cost. Our total engine cost at this point is $2,845.25. And finally, we finish it the rest of the way out to be a runner. There's a lot of miscellaneous stuff on here. Basically, we're finishing off the fuel system, cooling system, and a lot of hookups. So that's why you have a lot of miscellaneous seals, um, packings for that transfer pump, new gaskets, uh, three new fuel filter elements, 5577. Uh, one of the big ticket items, I had to put four new old stock injection pump lifters in the pump housing itself. That was 25105. And then just all the miscellaneous seals for all of those parts. Resealed the R meter shaft. Um, the big ticket item on the list was that new custom built radiator core, $701.95, but that thing turned out perfect. Um, all the hose connections for all of it, some lower radiator pipe steel tubing repair. I popped for four new old stock radiator hose clamps. They t uh, told $84, but they've got the look. That hybrid temperature gauge, so the new cat uh, temp gauge that I basically tore apart was $100.94. Bunch of really tiny hardware to uh, made it up to that original um, large face uh, gauge and can. All the miscellaneous lines for sealing everything up, plumbing the oil pressure gauge, repro, uh, exhaust extension pipe from ACMOC, $65, and uh, new old stock pre-cleaner top for the air cleaner, $60. So the build total for this page was another $1,503.37 added to our long block existing tally. So a running D3400 final cost, $4,348.62. Next, we'll look at the starting engines. You all remember the Tri build. I spelled it T-R-Y because I wasn't sure if I was going to pull off three of them or not. You could always tell the people that were late to the party in the comment section because they were like, you shouldn't spell Tri like that. They, they'd missed the joke. So we had quite a lot of machine shop services involved in getting this part of the project rolling. Uh, I had them grind three crankshafts, undersized. They reconditioned four of the six rods plus fitted new uh, wrist pins and bushings to the rods. I also purchased four cylinder sleeves from this first shop to try to return two of the three blocks back to standard bore. All of that told $502.74. That initial shop was not able to fit those sleeves. A second shop did for another $200. I purchased two new from Cat 20 under rear main bearings to $29.54. I only had to purchase one 20 under new from cat front main, $65. The remaining three bearings I had to all custom size and make from T6061 aluminum stock and that billet was like $15. It definitely pays to make your own when you're talking about aluminum bearings that are just a straight through sleeve, you know. Four new old stock pistons, $200. Then the uh, four new old stock piston pins, another 32 the new old stock piston pin bushings, 44. And again, I had to split uh, between NOS piston rings and new cat to get complete sets. The NOS rings were 124. The new cat rings were 9544. We had those first gen piston pin retention plugs, old school for the unit that went on 1113, 20 bucks. 
Um, of the valves, I had eight new old stock intakes, four new old stock exhausts. They were 160. And we have all of the 20 under rod bearing sets, six total, $250.56. Then we have the front main seals, all three, rear main seals, all three. So we have a total of $2,067.10 into building three starting engine short blocks. We just split that down evenly. Average cost, we're just gonna say is $689.03 a piece. And because these are flathead engines, building them the rest of the way out to long blocks is pretty simple. We just throw some cylinder heads on. We've got a couple head gaskets on there. The flywheels go on. We've got some fold over locks, three top cover gaskets, three base gaskets for a total of $188.91. Add that to our 2067.10 short block total. We are in it for $2,256 and a penny for three long blocks. Breaks down to $752 each. And now we just pick back up with the expenses that went into turning one of those long blocks into a runner for this tractor. Again, just a bunch of miscellaneous stuff. Pause it, look at it anytime you want. The oil drain tube, old stock, 30 bucks. New pet cocks for everything. Resealed exhaust manifold. New bearings in the governor, $56. New governor belt. We got by cheap on the mag. We pretty much just had to purchase an 832 helicoil thread repair kit. Senior was able to save everything else in there. Um, Breather gaskets, crossover tube seals, carburetor rebuild kit, $54. New synthetic float for the carb, another $40. Totals $319.07. Add that to our average long block cost of $752 for one unit. That means 1113's complete running pony cost $1,071.07. But if we put this tally onto the existing entire tri-build tally, our whole tri-build actually cost $2,575.08 to produce. And to finish off the starting system, the pinion drive was, well, a lot of what was in 1113's original was junk. I had a pinion drive parts unit I had picked up for $50, and it lent a bunch of pieces to this tractor. So that really, it got us by cheap. And then we just have, like, to reseal it, uh, output seal, housing seal, the upgraded um, pinion sleeve bolts with the fold over locks, $10.68. Fold over locks for the rest of it. The whole pinion drive pretty much cost $93.78. That means we're complete to here. Next, we're looking at everything right down the middle here transmission and final drives. All right. This is just one page. We pretty much have it all covered. So we start at the front. I put a new old stock main clutch disc in it for $200. I had to use um, pressure plates for my grandpa's old cat because 1113s were uh, rusted beyond saving. I had those resurfaced for $95. And new separators plate springs went into the rebuild and we got like input shaft seal for the transmission. And I used a lot of the transmission parts and bevel gear parts out of the D2 number 5U 3248 rear half. It was a parts unit. I picked the whole thing up for $150 got every bit of my money back out of that because that lent most of its gears to 1113. New bevel shaft bearings, 304.55, new from CAT. Then we resealed the bevel shaft and all the fold over locks for the caps. The um, bimetallic steering clutches, frictions and steels we put in, that was $672. New steering clutch release bearings, that was another $120. And then the oil cups to feed those bearings. We have all the wicking felt that goes into all the oil, oil cups on that back end. We have the steering clutch drum seals, two of them, 56, 64. Actually, we used four. I doubled them up, so that was four seals right there. Uh, miscellaneous steering lever return springs, all the bearing retention plug dowels to, to seal up all those final drive passages we have i had to change the um the sprocket shaft outer bearings new bearings and races both sides 18350 we repaired a bellows seal i did a repro drawbar shoe and stop pins both from acmoc 35 dollars 55 dollars respectively new han seat cushions 470 dollars top quality product right there made a new fuel tank dipstick so the material for that was 3184 and I bought a couple sheets of steel to make my own fold over locks for a lot of those larger uh, fasteners in the back end. That was $49.37. So that means we have a total of $2,664.35 into the transmission and the final drives. And I got lucky because I didn't have to replace any of the other 
bearings that were in either final drive. These finals were in excellent shape. Gears were in excellent shape. Shafts were good. If I just even would have had to re-bearing or re-gear these things, you could look at a thousand to fifteen hundred dollars more onto that total if I had had to do any real work in there. Next up, undercarriage. So we're talking about everything from here to there and from there to there. All right. We start off reconditioning the track frames. So we have those four new rather large pivot shaft bushings, 226.96. The new seals for those, we have eight very good used J-Series track rollers that I purchased from a gentleman in California. So it was $800 to buy the rollers and it was another $260 to ship them. $1,060 total invested in getting those eight very good track rollers for this tractor. And we had to replace some of the thrust washers. So we have eight new old stock thrust washers for them, $96 and eight uh, adjustment shims, clearance shims for those uh, washers. That was another $57.12. And all of these um, bearing caps on these track rollers needed new grease seals and it's an inner seal and outer seal, a double lip setup. So the 16 total inner grease seals we needed was 436, 48, and the 16 total outer grease seals were another 387, 07. And then we have some hardware to retain them in the caps. The um, rebushing the upper carrier rollers, the two new bushings were 8374, the two speedy sleeves to renew the seal areas were 10507. Grease seals for those, another 3687. Now these track chains with the 20 inch wide pads. So I decided on $1,100 for the price of that because those of you that follow the build know these came off of a Vaughn aftermarket combine track kit for John Deere combines. They used all Caterpillar D2 components. That's where I got these. And I had paid $2,200 for the set of tracks on the long custom frames and I split that 2200 and half. I'm considering $1100 for the chains and the 20 inch pads. The other $1100 is in the 16 D2 bottom rollers and the four D2 front idlers I got from the kit that are going toward other projects. So to buy the track chains and pads on this tractor, I'm saying $1100 for this application. The two new Cat Master Pens, thirty-five seventy-eight, and all of the hardware to put those back together after the pin and bushing turn, four seventy-three sixty-two. So that means we have four thousand one hundred forty-five dollars nineteen cents in parts. That's where I put that in asterisk right there. And we're going to get a little bit complicated right here now, but bear with me. So same idea as we did with the tri build, where we factored total production cost of all three of those engines versus the actual cost of what went on the tractor. Same thing right here. On a separate page, also for undercarriage, I included the cost that went into building that track press to do the pin and bushing turn on those chains that made it possible to use them on this tractor. It's on a separate page, so we can factor this both ways at the end. Okay, so we started off with all of the major pieces of steel that went into the construction of the frame. So none of that's on here at all, but I had to buy that OTC 50 ton hollow ram cylinder. That was $1,931.75 by itself. I tooled up with a inch and five eighths um, piece of high grade all thread rod with a large nut to make a center forcing screw for that ram, $144.99. Cylinder mounting hardware, insignificant. I had to uh, purchase a secondary OTC 10,000 PSI pressure line, gauge, and T adapter to fit that uh, or get that second pump up and running for that project. That was 14606 and 8578 respectively. The grade 8 hardware I purchased to assemble the press frame, 5178, and I invested in a chunk of A2 tool steel, two and a half inch diameter, three foot long rod. I made a good number of the pusher dies for that press. That was $375.51 for that material. So my total track press build cost is $2,775.68. So we've worked most of the way through having a functioning just base model tractor at this point. Now we look at the expenses that went into rehabbing and or purchasing a lot of the cat factory options that I 
put on the machine. So we start off with the PTO drive rebuild, the drive coupling bushing I had to put in with 3279, the PTO input and output seals were another 3222. New old stock PTO housing mounting studs, six of them, I picked up for $30. Now that belt pulley drive that went on to the PTO, the angle drive, that was a swap meet find. I bought that whole thing for $35. Bucks. Uh, purchase of the century right there for me. The uh, belt pulley drive input seals, $27. Output seals, $31.48. The front tow hook, that was another swap meet find. Bought it for $20, was well pleased with that as well. And uh, new cat tow hook mounting bolts, four of them, $10.81. So of the authentic Caterpillar produced factory options on the machine, I've only got $219.30 invested in. The second part now of the cat factory option build, these are the pieces that I had to fabricate new myself because they just didn't exist. We'll start with the belly pan and we had that completely trashed one off the poor old uh, beer can engine D2. We used as a pattern and steel costs this last summer were ridiculous. That's what most of this is. So to do the belly pan, we had to start with a four foot by eight foot sheet of quarter inch thick steel. That was $538.88. Granted, we used the majority of that material, even scraps went into the rest of these, but that's what it was. And then these other three items were all on the same uh, purchase order. These are uh, the angle, uh, reinforcement piece that goes across the flat steel reinforcement piece goes across those two doubled up the thickness for the tow hook mounting at the front we had some uh, 3 8 thick uh, four inch wide steel bar three feet long went for the front mounting brackets and uh, those were 195.67 uh, amongst themselves so basically into the belly pan build we've got $734.55 the two-piece engine side panels were a pretty straightforward build. I purchased a 4x8 sheet of 14-gauge steel for $157.12, and I just had to uh, throw in some uh, half-inch uh, OD by six-foot-long uh, steel tubing for the uh, the reinforcements at the top. That was $12.48, so those side panels totaled uh, $169.60. The side iron brackets now. So we replicated those um, beat up ones that came off of my grandpa's old cat. And um, 3 8 steel was even more expensive than half inch last summer for some reason. Um, I couldn't even get a four by eight sheet from my local supplier. So through McMaster car, I bought um, a 3 8 a pair of 3 8 um, steel bars, four inches wide, six feet long. Two of those were $406.30, but they gave me all the material I needed to do that set of side irons. And again, I used some of that quarter inch scrap from that belly pan sheet that got us fixed up there. And then the front bumper build. So who can forget my epic fail on the uh, custom rolled piece of channel. So the first one that didn't count cost $375.81. It was only half as curved as I needed it to be. So we did it again, this time with the right curve. It was another $375.81. We'll factor that both ways at the end, both with that mistake and without. And um, yeah, for the uh, the side mounting brackets, I got a uh, two 12 inch by 12 inch by three eighths inch thick steel plates. Again, three eighths steel was just stupid. Those two plates were $257.18. Um, a box of half inch channel wedges to mount it all up, $28.67. So if we figure just the one channel roll that I used in the build, we were $661.66 into that curved front bumper with the brackets. If you factor my mistake in there, our total cost for that part of the project was $1,037.47. Everything on this page then, the fabrication grand total of the factory options that I had to recreate myself of the pieces that actually made it on the tractor, $1,972.11. If you factor in my mistakes, overall cost was $2,347.92. Final page now before we get to the, uh, the finished tally up sheet. I've got a paint heading. Now I didn't put a lot of work into paint. On, well, I put a lot of work into paint, but I didn't do a lot of paint. We'll put it that way. All of the new pieces I made had to be weathered in to match the existing finish and all of that canary yellow that was on most of the tins when we got this. I'm sure you all remember how bright that was. That had to be taken off as well. So I purchased a gallon can of aircraft grade paint remover. It was $73.76 by itself, but the way it 
just by accident, I learned how it would burn this new paint and get those darker orange blotches in there that almost perfectly matched the discoloring of the original finish. That was worth every penny. I also used two quarts of a very low grade yellow industrial paint because I wanted something that I could abuse and darken and chip. That was $100.18 and then just some Rust-Oleum flat brown and flat black to help out with the shading and the accents. $38.40 for a few cans of that. So my paint total is $212.34. Final item on this page, I also included that OTC 30 ton hollow ram hydraulic puller set that I purchased about the time I was getting into those bull gears because I needed that cylinder to pop gears off of shafts to press gears back on. I needed a bunch of the other puller pieces when I got into the undercarriage part. Again, this is a tool that can be used for other things, but so far it's only been used on this project. So for our total production cost tally versus actual tractor cost tally, we're including it as well. Just that 30 ton hydraulic puller kit cost $2,986.45. So we've been through all of the bullet points item by item for cost tally. The whole breakdown is right here. So from all of these lists, I've condensed it down to one sheet. We're going to begin with the tractor rebuild actual cost. So assuming I didn't have any mistakes that I had to pay for, assuming I didn't have to buy any tools, build any equipment, and I didn't build two other starting engines that we didn't need for this tractor, this first tally is just what you see right here. All right. So our initial tractor purchase was $300 to buy 5J1113 because it was in such poor shape when we found it, the prior owner actually tried to give it to us. Because it had such good tin work and a few other decent aspects, we offered him $300. We, we didn't feel right just taking it. So $300 bought us into this to start with. We've covered the diesel engine rebuild. That was $4,348.62. The starting engine rebuild, just the tractor unit, was $1,071.07. Starting pinion drive only cost $93.78. Driveline, transmission and final drives, $2,664.35. Undercarriage, the parts were $4,145.19. The cat factory options that I had purchased were $219.30, both to, uh, to get them bought and to get them uh, refurbished. The cat factory options that I built or fabricated were $1,972.11. I've got $212.34 into the paint. So grand total for the tractor as it sits right now, $15,026.76. Now for the overall cost of production tally, everything that went into the 5J1113 rebuild series. We're talking my mistakes. We're talking the tools. We're talking the equipment. We're talking building three starting engines, all right? This is what it costs to produce all of the episodes that you all have watched. So initial tractor purchase did not change. Diesel engine rebuild did not change. But factoring in the entirety of the tri-build, three starting engines, $2,575.08 total. Starting pinion drive did not change. Drive line, transmission and final drives. I'm going to add the cost of that 30-ton hydraulic puller set that $2,986.45 puts our driveline total up to $5,650.80. Undercarriage with the addition of the cost of building the track press puts undercarriage tally up to $6,920.87. Cat factory options did not change. The cat factory options that I built or fabricated did if I Factor in my um, bumper build mistake number one. That puts that extra $375.81 under the tally. So we're $2,347.92 in that department right there. Paint did not change. So here's what it cost to produce the whole series. $22,668.71. So those are the tallies as best as I'm able to track. I've never kept track of any of my time. I've never factored my own labor into any of this. I've never assigned a dollar value to an hour of my time while I'm here. 
Besides, I would literally have to have a time clock on that wall to punch in and punch out every time I went through that door. It's just too much to try and keep track of. Add to that the YouTube factor, all right? Because documenting everything for YouTube makes each task take at least twice as long to complete, it's a pretty safe bet to say of the time I've devoted to this project over the last four years, half of that has been spent doing what I'm doing right now, recording, editing, uploading, answering comments, keeping up with channel maintenance. It goes on and on and on. That being said, um, without the influence from the YouTube channel, this tractor never would have been rebuilt. So granted, I've invested enough time to rebuild two tractors and the amount of time that I rebuilt this one, but also without the revenue that the channel generates, this tractor, had it been rebuilt, still would not have been rebuilt to the level that it is now. So there's upsides, there's downsides to every situation. That's the straight deal. The YouTube channel literally makes all this stuff possible. And um, there are other unquantifiable factors that come into play, um, like the parts units that went into, um, or that lent parts to this machine. My grandpa's old D2, all right. A lot of those pieces are on here, but I learned a lot over the years working on that tractor because it too was in such horrible shape. That then led to me, well, deciding to part it out and other pieces of that tractor are on other machines now, helping them to live on. I sold other remaining good parts of that tractor to other collectors and I've scrapped the majority of what was not salvageable. So I consider that pretty much a wash. If there are any outstanding expenses still tied to that, you have to chalk it up to just being in the hobby and uh, also collectors helping other collectors. Okay, a lot of pieces were just given to me for this project from my buddy John. He gave me that diesel engine block. Um, he gave me this exhaust flapper. He gave me the PTO. He gave me a generator for up front right here for when I fit the cab. On the flip side, whenever he needs help, I've given him parts for his projects whenever I've been able to. It's a constant back and forth. That's, again, just part of being in the cat collector community. I think I still owe him a little bit, but we'll even up someday. I'm sure of it. So, yeah, I also did not factor in any, like, shop consumables. There's no welding rod on that tally. There's no torch gas. There's no sealers. I also didn't factor in any of the fluids because based on what you want to run in your machines, that price varies quite a bit. It all depends. It's all part of just the general maintenance of having... A machine so I didn't think any of those um, costs were pertinent either to those um, those tallies so that's the long and the short of it everybody it has been one heck of a long journey getting here I appreciate all the support all the subs all the watch minutes all the comments you guys literally made this possible I would not have done this without the YouTube channel so big thanks go to y'all for that um, I think that's about a wrap I got nothing else for you on this, at least until we start fitting the cab. Thank you again, everybody.